mic. All right, thanks everybody. And uh, we're gonna ask the candidates to come on up to the front of the room and they know they can move their stools wherever they want. Uh, we're joined today for Frontier Rotary Candidate Forum by the candidates for School Board Ward 1. I will ask prepared questions with the candidates rotating going first. They will have 90 seconds to respond to each question and we'll also have 90 seconds for opening and closing statements. There will be no questions from the club members or from the Zoom's chat room. Uh, opening statements begin with Camille DeYoung, and you have 90 seconds. Step right on up. Hi, I'm Camille Fry DeYoung, and it is my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I sincerely appreciate you all hosting this forum. I'm the current president of the Stillwater Board of Education. I'm a proud graduate of Stillwater High School, as are my daughters, Shannon and Sarah. I'm running for re-election because I feel like I have the experience that can help lead the district out of this tumultuous year. I'd not planned to run for re-election. I've served seven years on the board, but due to a variety of reasons, the board has welcomed three new members in the last nine months, and it's a five-member board. That's not a bad thing because each new member brings new knowledge, new ideas, perspectives to the board. But when several people that I trust and respect asked me to file, I decided to. I'm a former high school math teacher and a recently retired industrial engineering professor, best decision ever. <laughs> um, and so I can relate to some of the questions that um, and the issues that, that teachers face. An individual Board of Education member can listen to patrons, we can ask questions, we can study the issues, but only the board makes decisions. I am a firm believer in that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, and that's something I feel like I do well, is facilitate rich discussions among all board members. Thank you. All right. Carly Santelli, 90 seconds. Hi, I am Carly Santelli. I was born in Stillwater. I graduated from Stillwater High School in 2006. I met my now husband when we were both in eighth grade here. Uh, our son attends Highland Park, third grade, and we have a three-year-old daughter who isn't in school yet. We, I decided to run because I felt that we needed a better representation of parents and guardians who have kids who are actively in, enrolled in the school system right now. Um, I like to take in consideration all points of view, listen to all sides, and I like to try to come up with the best solution that comes up, that, come, that will benefit the most amount of people, whether it be all of the students, teachers, everyone. I want everyone to have a pretty fair shot. Um, so that's why I am running. Thank you. All right, Carly, the next question goes to you. The Stillwater Board of Education and Administration have taken specific actions directed toward containing the spread of COVID-19 and protecting the health of students and staff. However, it seems no matter what the board does, the decisions are wildly unpopular. How do you evaluate these actions and what, if anything, would you advocate doing differently? That is a very great question. I would like to see a better allotment of um, PPE spread out to the schools because I know for a fact that not all students were given PPE despite being told they were, um, particularly face masks. Um, I, I think the school board has done a great job at trying to make the best of the situation that we have, but I do believe that there could have been maybe better communications to make sure that everyone understood the protocols directly. Camille. Oh, well, um, we, were, we were making the best bad decisions that we could. And I say that with all honesty because, um, you know, people have wildly different views on the pandemic and on the um, situation that the city was in. 
we approached it from a safety standpoint. That was our first consideration. Safety for students, safety for um, teachers and staff. I was one of the people that early on wanted to get the little kids back in school. Um, but when I started listening to teachers who were just terrified about, you know, they had older parents or they had immunocompromised situations at home, um, it, it changes your view when you hear those stories. Looking back, I think that we probably should have looked at the color system and changing that earlier, but we didn't. And um, so I'm just glad they're back in school and I'm glad to see full parking lots when I drive by. So, thank you. Oh, All right, Camille, next question is yours. Here. Since my departure from the Board of Education in 2017, the board has struggled with a tremendous amount of turnover, both from long-term members retiring and newly elected board members resigning after short tenures. You alluded to this during your opening comments. Are you committed to completing the five years of the term for which you are campaigning? I am. Do you, do you want me to take 90 seconds? <laughs> take as much time as you want. All right, well, Carly. I am as well. I have two children who are going through the school system now. So I plan on being in Stillwater for probably at least a good majority of the rest of their schooling, so. All right, next question is yours. The pandemic has placed financial pressures on districts across the country. What should our district be doing now to prepare for possible state funding reductions over the next couple of years? <sighs> that is a, another fantastic question. I would probably look to see where funding is being spent more heavily and see if that can make some cutbacks. I know maybe sports might need to take a cutback on some things or maybe their uh, fundraisers could help benefit other areas of the school. So that might be something to look into. All right, Camille. Well, I mean, there's no question um, given recent events as well as just the pandemic and everything that we've had to spend. The district is very well managed financially. Um, we have a very bright CFO. Our superintendent is a very good planner. Um, I know that they're already looking at next fall and what the enrollment numbers are projected to be and whether we're going to have to shift teachers into different places. Generally, we have some turnover with teachers, so we're we're not, I'm not saying that we're going to have to lay people off, but when personnel is 90% of your budget, it's, it's hard to cut the budget without looking at people and shifting things around. So that's the first thing. The second thing is all of the, um, how we're going to catch kids up, how we're going to recover and, and get kids back to where they're learning and their knowledge should be. And so we're having summer school this, this summer for everybody. Um, and some of that's being paid for by the um, federal money that we've received, but there's certainly gonna be things that we're gonna be tightening the belt on. And I would, I would think, I don't wanna, I'm only one person, but I would think we'd look at, you know, some of the higher dollar um, personnel perhaps. Thank you. Okay, next question is yours, Camille. This question is not being asked from a pandemic perspective, so please avoid answering from that angle. If elected, would you work to keep the school district on its current course, or do you see a need for significant changes? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges for the school district is similar to what the university face, faces, or did, you know, when I was there nine months ago, um, and that is trying to put every, get everybody to work together, not have the elementary sites competing with the secondary sites for funding that, that we try to figure out how we can all um, row the boat in the same direction, if you will. So to me, that's the biggest challenge that we have, pandemic or no pandemic, is um, I, I don't like seeing school sites competing for against each other for resources. 
um, somehow we've got to come to an understanding that we're all in this together. Carly. I would like to see better community uh, outreach where the community and the schools work together to improve all around. So I, I don't know how I'd go about doing that, but that's what I would like to see. All right, next question is yours. How should the school board be evaluated? In other words, how should we as citizens measure your success? Oh, <laughs> um, that is a great question. I don't have an answer for that, to be honest. So I will pass it on to Camille. All right, Camille. Um, well, I think one of the ways that you evaluate us is through your vote. Um, we have a f very formal superintendent evaluation process, and we send out surveys to parents and, and teachers, and we use some of that. Um, there's questions about the board on some of that. I think it could be a much richer process, perhaps having the staff, the administration and the staff um, answer anonymous questions and evaluate the board that way. It is, you know, no one, people don't notice the school board unless something important is happening. And whether it has to do with athletics or it has to do with a pandemic, um, I think this pandemic has has really raised the visibility of the board. And so that's nothing but good. Um, it's been a little painful at times, but it's it's been, you know, just the fact that you have more people involved and engaged. So from the evaluation perspective, I hope that people know that you can send us comments or suggestions, and um, we certainly will be listening. Thank you. Okay, Camille. Other than the pandemic and its effects, what is the most critical issue facing Stillwater Public Schools right now, and how do you propose we address it? Well, um, now, this actually is related to the pandemic, so I apologize, but I'm going to answer that question because I think that we need to regain some trust. Um, I think the community is very divided, and I think we could maybe have sit down and have a community conversation with the administration, some of the board members, et cetera. That having been said, um, probably I would have answered the same way that I think we need to work together more as, as individual teachers and board members and sites and, and whatnot. So um, we all want kids to do well in school. We all want, kids to succeed and to be able to go on and live the best life that they can. And we have a fair amount of people in this community and fair amount of kids that are classified as homeless. And so I think that's something that, that we as a community could work together to uh, mitigate. Thanks, I'm done. Carly. I would like to see expansion on enrichment activities such as the arts and STEM, because I feel that the lower grades that kind of gets ignored a little bit. And that's where you really get the kids really interested in science and technology and all that really cool stuff that could lead into a potential job for them in the future. So that's what I would like to see. All right. The pandemic has pushed educators to think outside the box and consider alternatives to traditional treats, traditional teaching methods. How do you see blended and online learning combining to meet the educational needs of students in future academic years? I could see it being very beneficial to do that in future years, especially in instances such as a child has to be home for two weeks out of the year because they had chicken pox, for example, or they had a bad case of the flu. Uh, so I would, I think that is probably in our future. Um, we need to work on getting the technology available to the students and their families 
because I know not everyone, as Camille mentioned, homeless students, they don't have access to internet regularly. Um, and our poverty level students as well, they don't have access to the internet or a laptop or some sort of a device that they can use. So I'd like to see expansion into maybe offering even like a loaning system like they did this year for some of those students. Camille. Sure. Um, Kevin, would you mind repeating the question? Of course. The pandemic has pushed educators to think outside the box and consider alternatives to traditional teaching methods. You just wanted me to say that phrase over again, didn't you? <laughs> how how <laughs> okay. do you see blended and online learning combining to meet the educational needs of stu students in future years? Well, um, it's interesting because Two years ago, uh, Tim Riley and Dustin Revis, who were on the board at that time, had already started talking about establishing a virtual academy for students. Um, I've taught a lot of distance classes at Oklahoma State, uh, or did, and that's not a simple thing. You can't just flip a switch and take your regular class and put it into a distance format. Um, my experience was that Students, college students weren't that great at, at disciplining themselves to watch and to stay up. So I had some serious concerns about it. Um, then the pandemic hit and we were forced to that. Um, there are things we could have done better. There are things I think we did really well. I think one thing the schools do really well is establish relationships. And our teachers were driving all over neighborhoods, delivering packets. Um, telling kids, you know, taking them a 100 day cookie or, or something. So that was fantastic. We have already anticipated that there will be about, oh, 10%, well, maybe five to 10% of kids who will remain learning virtually in the fall. So we're kind of preparing for that. Okay, next question is yours. It is easy for all of us to find fault with public schools. However, what is at least one thing that our district has done particularly well in the past couple of years? You know, I think the, the one thing I would point to is the uh, 2000, what, 11 bond. Um, the one that built Westwood and built, improved Sanger Ridge and the middle school and the junior high. Um, we, when bonds come out, as you well, well know, we present projects and list budgets. All of those building projects came in on time and on budget. The same budget that we told the community it would be uh, when we presented the bond. So I think financial management is something that the district has done extremely well. We have a, a very comfortable um, carryover amount. Um, Schools have to have kind of money in the bank to get through the first parts of the year until the ad valorem taxes and the state allocations come in. So we have a very comfortable um, over, you know, budget or a percent uh, for that. And, um, you know, Mark Moore, that's something he does really, really well is uh, manage the budget. Thanks. Carly. For the most part, maybe communication. I've had great communication with my son's teachers and even the principal there. They've all been fantastic. So at least at the individual school level, the teachers have been amazing. So that's what we've, I think we've done well. At. Okay, next question is yours. Some members of the state legislature continue to push to expand weapons in schools. Do you support or oppose Army and School District employees? I am honestly on the fence on that. I feel that that could be a good thing if that type of situation were to arise where we needed a type of weapon in the school. But at the same time, if someone is having a bad day and little Jimmy knows that his teacher has a gun in her desk, then that could lead to a bad situation. So I think it would have to be with some very, very strict training to allow it, but I would probably lean towards more no. Okay, Camille. 
uh, for me, that one's easy. Absolutely not. Um, it is, I just think, as Carly said, the training that is required to actually handle a firearm safely and appropriately is more than most teachers or administrators would have had. We already have school resource officers who are Stillwater police officers that um, rotate between schools. We have one at the high school full time, the middle school and the junior high. And then we have another one that rotates around um, with the elementary schools. So I just think it's too volatile a situation. Um, I would say no. Okay. What is your vision for Stillwater Public Schools 10 years from now? I would love to see Stillwater Public Schools be recognized as the school of choice uh, in, in the country. Um, how you measure that is another issue, but we have fantastic teachers. We have fantastic kids. Um, it's a very large organization. And, and as all of you know, that's really hard to, to get people to work together in. Everybody's doing their very, very best. It's just a matter of whether we're all pointing to the, to the same goal. So 10 years from now, I would love to see Stillwater Public Schools be a reason that the city can recruit businesses, be a reason that uh, Oklahoma State can recruit talented faculty to be the school of choice for good teachers that are looking for jobs. Um, and so to do that, we, we need to improve some things. Carly. I actually would have to agree with Camille. I'd like to see the schools be like, like top of the line kind of thing where we would have people coming. We want the best school for our kids. And so that's what I would like to see. Okay. I told you, you had 10, 10 questions. I wrote an 11th. <laughs> there course. was, there was a reference earlier to a lack of trust in the board in particular. There's going to be another bond campaign coming up in the next few years. A lot of planning going involved. We're going to depend on voters to approve that in order to do the projects that are planned. Do you envision any changes need in this well-structured process the district has used for years in order to successfully convince the voters to vote, vote for, the pro for the package? With the specifically to deal with the trust issues with the lack of trust issues that some of the community members have expressed i would probably say yes how to go about fixing those trust issues i'm not entirely sure probably again start with communication but that's where we need to start so thank you right. camille um you know, bonds are complicated. There, there are a lot of projects that are involved. Um, I think we need to have many more conversations before the bond is formalized um, to gain input from the community on what they see. Would, would they prefer to see, you know, significant improvements to the high school or a new baseball stadium or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and then we need to respond to that. We need to be um, fiscally responsible and listen to the community and keep making, try to keep making it the best we can, so. All right, we're going to proceed now to closing statements. So we're gonna go back to Carly because, uh, because uh, read my notes here. Uh, in the opposite order the last time, so we're gonna begin with Carly because Camille went first last time, so. And we're gonna give you up to four minutes. Oh, okay. I probably won't use it all. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to thank you all for coming today. This has been a great way to get our voices heard, get our topics out. Hopefully that we are able to move forward past this very interesting year that we've had. Um, I would greatly appreciate your vote. Um, I just would really like to see improvements made in STEM, the arts, and in special ed, and that's where my primary focus would be. So I would like to, hopefully y'all 
are getting out either today or tomorrow and early voting or at your polling place on Tuesday. So thank you. All right, Camille. Okay, I talked for a living, Kevin Clark, but four <laughs> minutes is I a lot. That. Um, okay, why should you vote for me? Um, I just wanna talk about a few of the things that we've done on the board, and I'm not taking personal credit for this at all because it's five people and a, a whole administration. But we, we have reestablished the strategic planning process that Debbie Vincent started, and we've improved upon it. So this year we're gonna include input from teachers and administrators and staff from across the district. And we haven't done that in the past, so I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, we pass a resolution to become a trauma-informed district. I don't know if you are familiar with Resilient Payne County, Carolyn McAllister and her group um, really encouraged us to look at the ACEs, which um, is the childhood experiences, adverse childhood experiences. And we know that we've got kids that, that have suffered that. We just do. So in response, we, we used to have one high needs counselor that was located at the high school. Each, each site has a counselor, but you know, their jobs sometimes are swamped with um, testing and other fun things. Um, so we hired two more high needs counselors and we hired an additional social worker. So we now have two social workers and three high needs counselors in response to that. We have an agreement with the city and I'm not gonna be able to tell you what it's called, but if a say a domestic violence situation occurs in a child's home, the police station and the uh, representatives will call the district and let, let us know so that the schools know that this child has been through something pretty traumatic. Um, we passed the bond and I, I've already told you that the, the bond came in on time and on budget. And that is when you're talking about $70 million, that's, I found that impressive. Now that I didn't do that, trust me, but um, it was happening. Um, I don't know how much you know about industrial engineering, but we look at organizations as systems. So a group of entities working together to achieve a common purpose. And so that's, as I've said, that's where I would like to see the district um, operate in a more effective way. And all of us rowing the boat in the same direction. I wanna really thank Carly for stepping up and running. It's been a pleasure to get to know her. Um, I'm embarrassed to tell you that I never, I never had to run because I was appointed the first time. And then when I filed this for, re, for election, um, no one filed against me. So the questions about why do you wanna be on the school board might seem obvious, but to have to really think about, you know, why do you wanna do this? And what do you hope to accomplish has been a, a learning experience for me. So thank you, my friend. And I would appreciate your vote on April 6th. Thank you. All right, so thanks to both candidates for being here today. The election is next Tuesday, April 6th. The runoff and the polls are open now, today and tomorrow uh, from 8 to 6. Um, the runoff elections for school board, Ward 5, and the city council seat 4 are also on the ballot. Today's candidates both have an online presence, which you can find in your email that you received today. Um, and it's also on our calendar and other places on our website. Um, the videos will appear on our website and will be available to the candidates to post to, to their social media if they would like. Um, and that's it, Mr. President, back to you. All right, thank you to our candidates once again.